Okay, so today we're going to discuss about the kinematoda or the nematodes. Okay, so we have here the general characteristics of your nematodes. So, speak about the nematodes, they are roundworms. So, I speak about the roundworms that pertains to the characteristics of the adult worms of the different genus here and they're your nematodes. Adult worms are round, that's why they are called here as roundworms. And they have, uh, their body could be divided into symmetrical, bilateral, meaning to say, if you try to draw a line at the middle portion of their body, one half of that will be equivalent to the other half. And they also have a complete digestive tract. They have a body cavity, so call it was their pseudocell. And they are, for their sex, for adult male, adult worms, so they have your separate body plan for the male and we have also here for the females that's why they are called here as dioecious for the general rule um adult male worm would be much smaller compared to the adult female worm and it would have here the posterior and tail would be described here as having a um would have your curved posterior and tail for the female again it's much much larger and at the same time, could be also identified here having their posterior and tail, which is most likely a straight, round, straight, but never curve. Another one, they don't have also here the circular torus system. Okay, then we have here the classification of the female worms. So we have that, we classify that one as oviparous. When we speak about oviparous, so these are the female worms wherein they are laying eggs. They are not laying larvae, they are laying eggs. But their eggs here are not yet embryonated, it requires embryonation. Most likely embryonation is taking place in the soil, especially for those STH or your soil tra soil transmitted helmets. Example for that, oviparous, we have here the Ascaris lubricoides. Another classification, we have the ovoviviparous. So again, these are the parasite wherein their adult female worms are laying eggs, but then again, their eggs are already embryonated and that's ready to hatch. So like, for example, Enterobius vermicular. So we'll be discussing that one when we go with the life cycle of that parasite. Another one, we have here the viviparus or simply larviparus. So again, these are the parasites that was only laying larva without eggs. But sometimes you could encounter parasites like the Capillaria philippines were in could uh, lay eggs and could lay larva at the same at the same time. Then we have also parasite were in you call it one as parthenogenetic. Parthenogenetic. Parthenogenetics are in the case of your strongyloides coralis. So we consider it one parthenogenetic because this one is capable of self fertilization. Does not require male worm for that to to be fertilized. Another one, we have here the classification of your nematodes. The first one, according to their habitats. As to, the habit, as to their habitat, we're talking about the habitat of their adult worms, where the adult worms write in habits. So, adult worm of your Ascaris, your uh, Trichinella, and we have also the hookworm, Strongyloides, and Capillarias write in habit here, your small intestine. Your trichuris, enteropius, on the other hand, try to inhabit here the large intestine. Other parasite, other nematodes could inhabit here our extraintestinal, like you could have here your tissue nematodes, we're talking about the filarial worms. And you could also inhabit here the muscles, just in case of the larva of your trichinella spiralis. And we have also here the meninges in the case of your androstrongylus cantonensis, or your rat lung worm. Another classification will be the presence or the absence of their chemoreceptors. So we we'll speak about the chemoreceptors. These are, again, they use this one in order for them to sense for the chemical agent in their surroundings. So we have here the caudal, the term caudal versus your cephalic. But caudal, so that's the tail end, but cephalic is not a head. Based on that, we could classify your nematodes here as belonging to your subclass pasmidia or cernintia. So those are the nematodes wherein they have they have a caudal chemoreceptors or at their tail end they have that receptor present on that. We could also classify that one as under the subclass Aphasmidia or Adenovarea. So for those type of your nematodes, they don't have the caudal chemoreceptors. As in case of your trichinellidae, that's includes trichinella, we have also here the 
trigures, and we have also the capillaria. Again, um, they don't have the caudal chemoreceptors. Uh, for the rest, if they don't belong here, then you classify here. Okay, so we started our discussion with the first species here with your nematodes. We have here the Ascaris lumbricoides. Ascaris lumbricoides, other name for this one is your giant intestinal roundworm. So this is the biggest of our intestinal roundworms. So this one is considered to be the incident with the parasitism with this parasite most likely to be second here in the most prevalent uh, intestinal infection among Filipinos. So for the morphology, again, adult is, okay, um, this one is uh, creamy white, pinkish in color, and that one would have here lips, three lips, you call this one trilobine. And we have also here triangular buccal cavity where it housed the lips. Adult male measure 15 to um, 31 centimeters in long. And again, this is much smaller compared to the female adult worm and that one would have also a curved posterior end tail. For adult female, measure 20 to 35 centimeter long and that one would have a straight posterior end tail and much larger compared to your adult female worms. And one adult female here able to lay um, as many as 200,000 eggs per day. For the ova, so the ova here measure 40 to 75 45 to 70 micrometers, and this one would have your three layers. The outermost layer is made up of your mammillated, corticated uh, albuminous, albuminous layer. So, meaning to say this one is made up of the albumin, the protein. So, this provides here a barrier for the permeability of a large substance to, in, to go in and out of the, um, of the cell. The middle portion, on the other hand, is made up of the transparent layer, which is your made up of the glycogen membrane. Glycogen is your carbohydrates. And the innermost layer here is made up of lipoidal vitelline membrane, so it's a lipid component. So in the outer membrane is protein, the albumin. Then the middle, the middle portion is your glycogen, which is the carbohydrate. And the innermost layer is made up of the lipid component. Okay, for the egg of your ascaris, so we could classify that one's fertilized. And we have also here the unfertile or unfertilized. Okay, fertilized is usually looks like this one is ovoid and characterized by the presence of a set of the organized germ cells, lessening granules, or factor ganglions, which are highly organized. And they are finely granular. For the unfertilized, most likely it's ovoid, it's elongated, and it was made up of the set of the unorganized germ cells, lessening granules, or we have also here your gran we have also here the refractory granules and that one is um, a coarsely granular making that one as your unfertilized. Based on that, we could classify the egg as either number one, this is your mammillated. So there, if there will be um cortication, mammillation, you call this one as mammillated corticated. If there will be space here, so able to see here much of the germ cell here, so that's your fertilized. In a case like this one, so this one is mammillated, and since you have here walang space inside that one, so it's much likely this also contains here large or coarsely granular, so making this one as your unfertilized. So this one is the absence of the mammillation or cortication, you consider this one as decorticated, and since this one is highly organized germ cell by space, then it become here your decorticated and fertilize egg. Okay, then we have here the life cycle of your Ascaris lumbricoides. So, again, um, the female adult worm try to lay eggs. This is being shed on the in the stool sample of the patient, and the egg of that is unembryonated or unsegmented. Unembryonated. Then it go to the soil where it requires your soil for it to undergo embryonation making that one as your SAA, soil transmitted helmets. So for the SAH parasite, it includes your ascaris, trichuris, and your hookworms. Again, it requires soil. It's very important for that in order for its egg to embryonate because you can, it will not infect the patient here if that one is not embryonated. Then you get infected by this parasite by ingestion of embryonated egg. Once you ingest that one, go to your mouth, esophagus goes down to your stomach, or try to hatch, the egg hatch, and try to liberate the larva. The larva then try to have migrate different parts of your body, could ascend to your heart, your lungs, 
of ensure it's being swallowed back, going to your small intestine, to become the final habitat, where in the small intestine, try to develop here to become adult worms. They try to develop here male and female adult worms, they try to copulate, and eventually the the gravid or the pregnant female adult worm will try to lay egg, and that egg is being shed on the feces, but that one again is unembryonated. It requires soil for that first, still need to go to the soil in order for that to embryonate and become infect infective stage. Okay, then we have here the pathology associated with your Ascaris infection. First, we have here due to your larval migration. Because the migration, again, the larva can migrate other part of your body and can cause the following trauma. Also, cause your particular hemorrhage, especially for your pulmonary lungs. Try to cause your Ascaris pneumonitis, or you call it once your Loeffler's uh, syndrome or Ascaris pneumonitis. So, this Loeffler's syndrome here could be manifested in your X ray. Characterized by mottled infiltration, so from my spot spots. Okay, that is also shaded here with the peripheral eosinophilia. So, um, it will have here increase the WBC count. It will have here increase the eosinophils, and that would always associate that with your helmet infections. Plus, would have here the bron mild bronchitis manifestation. Another one we have also the granuloma formation, or could be mistaken here as your neoplastic or cancer cells. And this granuloma could lodge here, could be found in other parts of your body, including your, we have that one, we have your brain, eyeballs, kidneys, spinal cord. Okay, so wherever this parasite could go, it tried to cause there some manifestation that's in a form of granuloma formation. For the adult, on the other hand, so adult here are wandering worms. So try to cause her vague abdominal discomfort, to cause was her Nakamura sign. Nakamura sign is acute colicky pain that usually being induced by your cold temperature. Another one, high burden of your worm infection may entangle here to form a bolus that might obstruct the different openings or body. Most likely to try to, they are very erratic, especially if the patient's undergone here some uh, anti-helminthic drugs treatment. So before uh, you try to treat the patient, make sure that uh, you give diphenhydramine so para matulog mo ng worm in order for that not to be erratic and it might find here some other way in your uh, or different openings or body, it might, lodge, might, it might lodge on that. Like, for example, it might entangle from a bolus and might obstruct your pulmonary lungs, so pwede tayong mamatay. Or it could go out in other openings of your body like your mouth, your nose, or even your ears. Okay, then we have here the situation and incidents wherein you are positive for the ascaris, but when you try to perform the DFS, for example, or soil examination, you weren't able to identify the presence of the egg. So why is that? So number one, because this one is all male infection. So pag all male infection, there's no female worm, therefore there will be no one we're going to lay the egg. So therefore you cannot find the egg in the stool. Second one is just the early stage of the infection wherein the parasites are still up to the larva stage, not yet mature to become adult worm. And of course here then expect that there's no eggs yet. The third one, the female larva is already okay, a transform already to adult worm, but still immature for that to lay eggs. And therefore still have here the absence of the egg. Another one we have here the purely unfertilized egg. So lahat na nakita mo under the your specimen under the microscope are all unfertilized egg. You cannot find fertilized egg. So the possible reason for that, number one, there is no male and no adult male, so therefore there no one we're going to fertilize the egg or fertilize the female. And the second one, we have your male are still immature for that to fertilize the egg. Okay, then we have here for diagnosis for the infection of your ascaris. Number one, we have the DFS direct fecal smear with stool sample for identification of the alba. And we have also here the concentration technique. For the treatment, okay, for the drugs related here to your um nematodes or your roundworm infections, most likely they are all applicable for that, regardless of the species. So most likely we are using for the following drugs, say for the treatment of your nematodes, not only for ascaris or bricoides, but as for the other nematodes. So we have your mebendazole, we have also your uh, albendazole, and you could also have your pyrazine citrate, you could also have your pyrantel palm weight that could also be effective in your hookworm infections.